um, IDI diesel ambulance. Um, it's a 90... One. 91. Mm -hmm. And um, so it sat for quite a few years and diesels, unlike gas, don't have the problem of uh, locking up. Unfortunately, diesel fuel causes rubber seals to swell and deteriorate over time, which of course your low pressure rubber return lines on your injectors in this case have uh, slowly um, deteriorated to the point where they split and are now leaking. Um, some of these have leaking o-rings. Um, some of them have split uh, split lines or in some cases both and we're going through and we are replacing we're doing a full uh, seal rebuild which is replacing all of your components you're replacing two rubber o-rings at the top of the injector that go under this plastic um, piece which is your low pressure return line couplers and you have a copper crush washer that goes at the bottom to help seal to keep it from sucking in any air as well as your rubber return fuel line and this is this is what is our biggest problem because a lot of where the clamps go on it has split right up in this area and it's just letting the uh, diesel fuel um, kind of leak by a um, little bit at a time. And you can see, because this has been run, you can see if you look down in here, you've got an excess of diesel fuel around your glow plugs where it's leaked out from the injector right here. And this, like this one right here, has a split. You can't really see it on camera, but it has a split right in there. And that's where it's leaking from. So we're going to actually be replacing this one right back here for the camera because that's the next one I've got in line. Um, and when taking these apart, especially after they've sat and they'll go through a few heat cycles, the plastic will get very brittle. And in this case, this one actually snapped when you were trying to pull the line off, um, which it's not concerning because I've got another one to replace it. I already put it on. Um, so I've already put this one on because um, it was just easier to go ahead and, and put it in line because i got to run it under the wiring harness and everything. Um, but that will, once we get this off and replace all the O-rings and the washer, it'll literally just set down over it. And these actually, it's just the pressure of the rubber O-rings that seal. They stay completely loose and movable um, even though you've got fuel running through them. Um, so if you ever do those, and it seems like it's loose, they're supposed to be like that. Um, and this one doesn't really have a line split issue. This one you can see is actually leaking from around the O-rings. Because you can feel that they're worn out. It, it wobbles more side to side than up and down or, or around. Um, so first thing, first things first is you got to take your high pressure um, oil line uh, diesel fuel oil line off at the top. In this case, we're lucky because this one's not stuck. They don't usually get stuck, but I've already run into one or two that have been. And these are our metal lines, so since it's going to be in your way, you can actually just bend those up a little bit out of your way, just gently. And that'll allow you to pull everything off the top. And that allows you to then pull all of your parts that you're replacing off this off and the new one is going to set over right on there um, so we can just push that out of the way for the moment because we'll get to that in a second Good. so once you get all that off and you've got everything loose uh, you can use a wrench or um, you can also use its loose fit one I got it's a 27 millimeter socket uh, deep well can fit over that um, in this case this one should just break break loose and should come out by hand 
that's the nice thing about diesel fuel is it works just like a, a WD-40 or a PV blaster would to help keep it from uh, corroding or getting stuck. And this one's got a little bit of dirt on it. Um, no biggie, you can clean that off. So that's that rubber, or uh, not rubber, uh, copper crush washer that helps to seal where it goes into the manifold to inject into the cylinders. Um, and you just clean that up a little bit, get some of that carbon build up and oil off of there. And one of the things that you want to do when you're doing these is try to have as little diesel fuel left on them as, po as, as possible because upon contact that diesel fuel will make these rubber o-rings start to swell um, and if you're not careful then they won't fit right or you'll end up pinching one or cutting one and you'll just you'll keep leaking like you were so um, I recommend using a pick but I'm actually just cutting these diagonally putting a slice in them and then they just kind of break off when you lever them up and there you go that one's ready to pop right off and you don't have to worry about tearing these up try not to tear up your injector but tearing these up isn't an issue because you're replacing as we said before you're going to be replacing those those rubber o-rings so those are just going to get thrown away they're they cannot be used for anything else and you cannot hold on to them as a spare to be used later on. Um, they just, they're, if you try to reuse one, nine times out of 10, they're gonna leak or the 10th time you'll get away for a very short while and they're just gonna start leaking, I'd say within a, a week. Um, so your best friend when doing something like this on gas or diesel, but especially diesel, is grease and it's the same grease that you might use to grease the underside of a car um, on the tie rod ends or the ball joints or the u, or the u joints and what you do is you're just going to take that and you're just going to get a little bit on there and don't worry it will not clog it up and then you're going to take your two o-rings and you're just going to set one down on top Push it down into that groove right there. Put your fingernails under it and just kind of work it all the way around. Sorry, there's terrible lighting. This towel's in the way. Um, and just kind of push it down around and it'll sit down into that first groove. And the second one, that'll allow you to put it on and drop it around that first groove and down to that second one. And by the time you're done, and this will get messy, but by the time you're done, it'll look something like that right there. And you're going to put a little bit of extra grease on there to help drop that plastic fitting down around it. Um, and then next, just take you, a screwdriver works well. Um, you can just take it, grab it like that, and just put that under there. Just pop it loose. Because these do get stuck from the, um, you can see a little bit of carbon and oil buildup because diesels, of course, burn very dirty. Um, so that gets up on there and will cause those copper washers to get stuck. Now, after you clean it off, if you put that copper washer back on there, all it's gonna do is fall off when you try to put it in and it's gonna get crooked down into the head. So whenever doing that, the grease will act as a minor adhesive um, without clogging or destroying anything. So you just put some on there Take your copper washer and press it down around it, get it seated, and it'll cause it to stick. And then I'll just take that extra grease and I'll put it down around the top to help keep it from risking to slide off. Just like that. And then all you're going to do, you're going to take that and you're going to drop it straight down back into where it came from originally. And just put her in. Now, once you've pull them out and you're putting them back in in most cases like this one it goes down almost all the way by hand and watching out for the camera there this will go on it and you're tight that's all it takes and then you'll just 
bend that back down and get it to where it seats. Don't you have to put your plastic? Yep, hang on. I gotta get that bent back down. If you get it right where it seats, there it goes. And grab the back end and lever it up. Then when you go to put that plastic piece on, you'll have enough clearance and movement without the hassle of it getting in the way trying to bend that piece back in place, which I found out the hard way. So like I said, I've already put this on. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the clamp up to there, that little clamp. Most kits will come with new clamps, like this one did, um, but I've seen them not come with new ones. And you can slide that on sideways and set it down and you'll feel it pop. And that means it's seated all the way down to the bottom of where it's supposed to go because it's got a little lip right up here that'll bottom out against that lip that you saw where those o-rings go to make sure it doesn't go down too far or not enough and then that will just sit down and you can start it by hand oh usually it's gonna make a liar out of me there it goes and put the small wrench right here and that should This is the long part of the process, is just getting this back down, because these, um, after getting bent out of, out of uh, their original shape a little bit, causes pressure on the threads, which doesn't let it just tighten down easy. And that's all there is to it. That one's done.